some uh, new faces here today, so I'm just going to do a quick introduction of DFA. And we are Design uh, for America of NYU. And we're a student organization, um, both undergraduate and graduate students all over NYU, all different majors. And we come together to solve social issues using human-centered design. And today we have with us our student leadership team, which is Action. Gabriella and Song. Oh, yes, I see all of them now. Um, and then we have our faculty advisor and Lore. Um, and uh, so the human centered design is actually something that has been um, uh, defined by IDEO as a deep understanding of problems and realities of the people you're designing for. So, one of the main concepts for human centered design is that. And empathy is our ability to see the world through other people's eyes and just to see how they feel, how they experience and how they do things and actually understand them better. And um, some research has shown that um, meditation is not only has positive effects on our well-being, but it also encourages us to become more empathetic towards others. So today we're going to start with um, a brief um, introduction into the meditation, which hopefully can help us uh, become more empathetic. And then at the end, we will have uh, time for Q&A. And I'm going to introduce our uh, meditation instructor for today, who is Ann Butters. She is um, a yoga instructor and a meditation teacher, and she encourages others to find and anchor their inner soul. She is trained in multiple fields uh, from pranic healing to Reiki and yoga for alternative pain relief. And she became certified and licensed to provide others with opportunity to heal themselves. And she's very kind and empathetic person. So I do believe that she's capable of teaching it to others as well. So here's Anne. Thank you so much, Valeria, and thank you. My name is Ann Butters, and this is an opportunity for us to come together both with faculty advisor Ann Lohr and to each of you for choosing to be here. It is a privilege for me. I was thrilled to hear that young, brilliant minds were exploring the possibilities of meditation and of empathy beyond success and material gain to choose to participate and consciously experience the potentiality of alignment. The chance offering to remember that we are all born with a highly developed intuition and extrasensory gifts. And yet it's very common to hide and suppress these until and unless we accept them as our gifts and learn to work with them. Feel them, they are always there just beneath the surface, laying dormant, waiting to be remembered. But how? Meditation. And more importantly, why? Empathy. How about the consequences of being a student or a teacher? Are you resilient to stress? How is the adaptation of this isolation and that remote classroom experience and limited social interaction affecting you? Do you experience overload and energetic smog? Are there emotional gaps and holes of being inside? And if so, what patterns become realized? And how about the workload? And what about the creeping up of fear? And where can I purchase time? And is there a student discount? Perhaps it's to create a peaceful internal mind, a little mental hygiene, almost like an energetic shower. It clears the slate for knowledge or to grasp and access higher consciousness. It's the access to your future thriving self. That's the little elixir that comes from sitting into stillness. Or maybe it's the beginning of a different relationship with yourself. It's the self, no self. Meditation offers us an opportunity to tether and to experience a balanced, centered, and a much more meaningful life when we learn to slow the roll, where we learn to align with the answers by first aligning with the questions. 
I remember it as if it was yesterday. I was still recovering from a, from a pretty, pretty gnarly seizure. And a friend of mine drove me to a yoga class. Just the act of dressing, the travel there, getting there, the only energy I had left was literally to lay on the floor for an hour and a half, no movement. Afterwards, the teacher somewhat aggressively approached me and just before he had a chance to express his discontent, I thanked him for the absolute best yoga meditation I had ever had in my life thus far. <laughs> his entire demeanor changed, it morphed. He shifted from anger to gratitude, from gratitude into, uh, uh, into a foray of, of happiness. And he, he basically skipped away very peacefully. I felt as if I had just scaled the Matterhorn in stilettos, right? I did what I could do, when I could do it, how I could do it, and nobody's influence affected me. There was no hijacking of my peace in that moment. And in fact, my peace affected his. There was a time I too possessed the all too common monkey mind, plagued with exhaustion, fatigue, pain, even mental confusion. I didn't really feel anything anymore. I was sort of scratching my head going, how did I get here? I was full of it, energy. It was stuck. It was coagulated. It was almost even toxic. The negative lens had become more my dominant lens in my viewpoint. Boy, did that hijack my throat chakra. <laughs> Again, a friend suggested that I try a meditation workshop. It might help provide me with some little ounce of nutrition in the presence of peace. That sounded pretty intoxicating, so I signed up. We were told to review and reveal why we were there. What was the point for attendance? Mine was, I just wanted to be happy. The teacher looked at me square in the eyes and said, go choose it. There were no stories. There were no references to the past. There were no references or experiences about the future. Just go and choose it. Just like you've chosen to be here today. So I did. <laughs> I began to live my life beyond the pain, beyond the physical senses. I became very open to alternative perspectives, or as I like to say, I started to live my life in the wonderment of a child, Shoshen. Everything was new. It was all different. I was feeling differently. And then I started to live as if there were not two. I was the only one. Anytime someone asked me something that created a response, a reaction inside of me, I felt it. And I would process that until I felt just flow. There really are no others. There's just me and me with me and others are me. So I learned through all my triggers and all my senses, even the upper ones. I learned through meditation and the awakening process that the access to empathy begins on the inside. If it is to be, it is up to me. It's a 10 word, two letter sentence. I discovered how to be empty and fully focused on the breath and the quality of the breath. I learned how to be labelless and meaningful and how to maintain hope and be desire free. I learned how to gain access to the realm of all possibilities, including happiness, which was separate from other people's experiences and maintain that connection while in a complete state of detachment. It's not easy, it's not impossible. I think science calls this the plonk field or the void. It's that space between where the storehouse is literally waiting for the information to be opened, accessed, gained. And once we are in that relationship with the self is redeveloped, it's infinite. Some even call this the ether or akasha. It's the place where all is remembered like those little infantile seedlings. 
This is where the true self resides. I like to call it the OG UP. It's the original unlimited data plan. It's the all. There are a bazillion reasons for meditation, stress reduction, increase of self-awareness, the presence of mind, reduction of negative emotions, an increase in creativity, patience, tolerance, and a steadfast devotion to equanimity. It's been found that meditation does influence the brain waves, the brain rhythms, which induces change. The efficiency and the wellness begins to organize in the brain, thus allowing our consciousness to literally shift and touch upon the emotional field. Meditation is an aid in understanding where I'm expanding and where I am shutting down or collapsing even. It's an offering to experience what is just as it is and feel for those superior emotions that guide the inferior ones. In this place, we persevere in sort of a quiet correctness. This is where we level up. This is where we have that little offering to align. It's a big offering. And this is that where we can trend center. And how can I use meditation to achieve everything? Effortlessly even. In the midst of this projected chaos and confusion and great materialism, which we endlessly compare and we contrast and we're thinking and we're studying and we're working and we're absorbing, meditation helps me turn off the dripping and the drizzling and the gushing faucets inside and outside of myself. This is where I'm afforded a glimpse into that little space. And why choose to pause, to be still, to listen, and to reflect. Meditation simply offers, why not? Again, it's not easy, not with today's lifestyles. We're, we're all inundated with these electrical signals affecting our energy field, especially with the rise of digital dementia. And yet, it is not impossible. So let's all begin with a little physical experience, let's determine which side of the body is in a more free flow state. So take one hand up to your face, just below your nose and begin to breathe. Take into account which side of your body has a fuller flow. One side of your nostrils has a, a deeper, a richer, a meaningful flow. If it's the right nostril, you're oxygenating the left brain. If it's your left nostril, you're oxygenating your right brain. And just file that information, file it away, and then allow your arms, once you have that data, to just rest back down into your lap and begin to breathe in a more refined manner, inhaling softly, fully, and completely, and then slowly, gently exhaling always aware that breathing happens without any effort and it renews us cellularly, just that knowing. Now, as you sit comfortably, maybe wiggle, wiggle, wiggle a little bit, find that comfortable place. If you need to shift where you're sitting, shift where you're sitting and then make that commitment to yourself to be still, to be quiet, to be motionless. Your arms are relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed, the jaw is soft, your tongue, it presses lightly to the roof of your mouth, just a little bit like a feather. And rest there, maybe even consider softening or closing your eyes. And then begin to envision a comfortable light covering your eyes, down your body, and find this peaceful comfort within your breath. And then put the mind to work with an affirmation to be still, to awaken to a higher consciousness, and to activate clear empathy, the access point, to feel into another realm of another person inside of yourself. And as you begin to ponder and align, find the wonderment in the words of the questions. 
What is empathy? It is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. And if there are no others, the ability to feel within yourself all of the ways of data. And what is meditation? Feeling into the wonderment of the words, the actions of mindfulness, of conscious and unconscious movement. Perhaps it's a single point of focus on a repetitive mantra or a prayer. What is peace? What is equanimity? And am I anchored in a space where there exists not one minute better than what is right now? Begin to notice the physical senses. Without movement, noticing the eyes, the ears, the nose, your mouth, feeling your skin and the breath. And then begin to experience the non-physical senses. What do you see in your mind's eye? What color? What shape? What memory? What realm is nourishing your sharp inner vision? Apply wonder and notice what cannot be seen, which makes seeing possible in this moment. And what is the takeaway as you continue breathing in a refined manner? What do you smell? What are you allowing in your intuitive sense to expand deep within you? What are you allowing as a byproduct of each breath in and each breath out? And now what do you hear? What is perceived and what is synthesized with the physicality of sounds and noise and quiet? Can you allow for the merge and simply listen to your inner body, the inner workings, the sounds of nature, of all living, maybe even of all man-made? perhaps even allowing the high-pitched ethereal sounds, the ohm of the earth, and find the wonder. What is it that cannot be heard that makes listening possible in this moment? The breath flows. And what do you taste? without actually putting anything in the mouth, what is the perception and the essence of the subject, substance? Begin to feel words that were said, feel the words that were unsaid, taste the belief system, taste the delivery system, feel for the truth, and just simply wonder, What is it that cannot be tasted that would make tasting possible? Each breath provides an offering to go just a little deeper. What do you feel? So we feel past the physicality. We embrace the intuitive knowing, touching upon information not previously known. What is the perception of what you feel? Removing any labels, focusing on the entire body without any outside stimuli. Can you sense the emergence of information of consciousness? Are there any recognized feelings, familiar feelings, unfamiliar feelings? Feel the pulse feeling past thoughts, feeling past the emotions, feeling past the illnesses, beyond addictions, beyond injuries. We feel past the atrocities and jealousies, insecurities and fear. 
well past displeasure or pain. We even reach past pleasantness, happiness and joy, safety. And it just lands us in the breath and outside of the breath and wonder, what is it that cannot be felt that makes feeling possible and the wisdom to express it in this very moment? And scan the body from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And what do you touch upon? What was not previously known flows Remembrances are allowed. What is it that cannot be touched that makes touching possible in this moment, inside of this breath? Allow yourself to simply tune in physically to the emotional experiences. These are currently embedded in the mind, the body, and inside the self. Feel for the attitudes, feel the emotions, feel the ailments, and now feel and reach for the well being. And then choose what are you going to tune into? And tune into that vibration with a newfound sense of precision. Listening to the tones in your own aura allows access to the aura of all other beings. And touch upon that truth and feel. Touch upon that taste, that color, that sound, all the sensations. Experience the mental, the physical, the psychological, and all of the spiritual results. You see, divine knowledge washes the untruths. It clears the conscious knowing and it emerges. It's a telekinetic pathway, which is non-lineal, open access for the perfect encoding with the greatest result. This is where we embrace and embody the intuitive embodiment. Now begin to visualize your future thriving self. Use different eyes, use different ears. Feel the touch, feel the taste of truth and lean into this experience. Maybe even hunt a little bit, feel for something that is not currently aligned. And yet perhaps there's just a little titch of desire. And then look to the side of that into the patterns of the mind as you check. Is the self-talk helpful or hurtful? Is it violent or nonviolent? Does it embrace the intuitive embodiment? Allow a glimpse into the undercurrents. Look into these waves. It's just information. There's fast waves. Sometimes those are the bully waves, the look at me, me, me waves. So notice these waves. And then after a few breaths, bring the subtle awareness to the rhythmic waves the calming waves, the soothing waves. You know, we can never have more yin than yang or short than long. They're always there. They're dependent on your focus. The in-breath flows directly into the out-breath. The out-breath flows directly into the in-breath. They're not separate. Not ever. In order to expand empathy, it is an inside job to get empty, 
and to get full. So consider flipping the mental switch to pause and place at the top of the inhale breath, just a little pause. And at the end of the out breath, put another little pause and hover there just a little longer without gasping, without discomfort. It's just gentle, mindful pausing. And then visualize the aftermath of the pause. Does this help with free flow? Are you focused on well being? Do you enjoy the nature of pause? Or do you push up against the energy for it to must be familiar? Can you savor the moment and witness the energy slowing rhythmically? The pause offered us an, an opportunity to expand, to see if it is our energy or perhaps another's energy. This offers us a chance to meet wherever it is that we hold the breath. This pause is a gift. It gives us a chance to tune in or to tune out. This is where we lean into the data for the wisdom. And in this pause, we engage innovative ways to anchor well being. And in doing so, the awareness of all others' consciousness becomes known. When we're busy, we just simply cannot access others' energy. We cannot not know what we know once we know it. We realize it, we live it, and we love it. It is the fine tuning of unwinding the nervous system and relearning a new depth of awareness. See, the ancient wisdom shows us we are not separate, not ever. That's a flawed premise. So as you continue to breathe in and pause, and as you continue to breathe out gently and slowly pausing, consider again this mantra, a simple sentence with 10 two letter words. If it is to be, it is up to me. And feel the breath. If it is to be a breath, it is up to me to breathe. If it is to be a calm breath, it is up to me. If it is to be a full breath and the quality of the breath connected in my future thriving self breath, it's up to me. What waves am I allowing? Am I allowing the fast pass? Is it the still point? Because I do know if you cannot find the still point in comfort, you might never arrive at it in chaos. So you gotta sit with it, marinate in it, all of it, the good, the great, the amazing, the horrific, the inexplicable, the bad. Feel where you feel, feel how you feel, feel into the space between the sensations that are showing up in the mind in the body and in your decisions. Can't shake it out, you can't move it out, can't buy it out, drink it out or smoke it out. It is a charge, it's an energetic charge. So get very quiet, very still, very empty. This is where you notice fullness and contentment. This is where you notice emptiness and vast space the fullness leads to noticing the fullness of the emptiness. This is the chance for leveling, for healing, and for nurturing inner empathy. 
what cannot be expressed that makes the wisdom to express it possible at this very moment. And recognize and align with that answer. Sitting with the experience, maybe beginning to come back into the physicality just a little bit, begin to move the jaw just a little bit, maybe left and right right and then left, maybe the head moves just a little bit, the shoulders maybe go up, back and around, maybe the hands start to move, the feet wiggle, the fingers wiggle, the toes wiggle, and then experience soft inhales and soft audible exhales, the vibration. So this is how air and breath shows up. And do this again, allow the inhale to flow in a connected manner into the exhale and feel the rhythm. You can keep the eyes soft or you can keep them closed. And as you inhale, maybe draw the eyes all the way up into your forehead, all the way up as far as you can. And as you exhale, drop those eyes down towards your heart. And experience yourself. Each inhale, the eyes might go back up into the forehead. They might even go to the top of the head and in some cases to the back of the head. And as you exhale, drop your eyes once again down towards your heart. And do this once again, slowly inhaling, drawing eyes up and exhaling and dropping those eyes once again down towards your heart. And try a zigzag on the next inhale, left and right with the eyes all the way up into your forehead. We're taking information from right side brain to left and left side brain to right. So be mindful with this passing of the information and in the ocular nerve. And as you exhale, once again, left and right movements with your eyes, dropping them once again down towards your heart. And then allow the eyes to settle and just simply breathe. Identify the undercurrents. Feel for any responses inside the body. Feel for the cues. And just listen. Maybe begin to wiggle a little more and slowly flutter your eyes back open and readjusting to an alert and more awake state of complete awareness. Kind of re-experience yourself in a quiet, maybe a little more meaningful manner. And then just as we started, let's go ahead and determine which side of the body is in a free flow state once again. So go ahead and take your hands up right underneath your nose and just experience taking into account which side of your body is breathing just a little more fully, a little more completely in the now moment. And then once you have this determined, again, file that information and lower your hand. And just remember this, you were always there for you. The bounce is relying on your mental flexibility. So be sure to prioritize your inner calm and then proceed purposefully, choosing to show up how you show up and remember that the sound in you wants to be heard. So always listen. I think this is a really good time to open it up for maybe some questions and some answers or um, anything that anyone might have. Welcoming back. <laughs> Oh, and this was so relaxing. I don't know uh, how everyone else is feeling. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better after having a very busy morning. <laughs> well, I'm so glad to hear that. I almost fell asleep twice. So, <laughs> um, um, I mean, I guess I can start with questions. Um, recently, I read, um, I came across an article. I actually didn't read it fully, but um, it talks about how. Um, mindfulness more empathetic 
And I feel like mindfulness is something very similar to meditation, but something that we do like on the daily basis, I guess, in everyday life. So I don't know if there's anything, any tips that you can give us to practice mindfulness every day. Well, it always starts with a breath and it just starts with one step. It might be something to just understand that, um, you know, when we're driving down or walking on a roadway, we're invariably, we're killing ants. We're killing a, an animal all day, every day. We, it, it happens. So the mindfulness to not hurt another sentient being, um, it might be something to really look at. Um, and that includes you. So if you're looking in the mirror and you have these hate-filled thoughts about yourself, the, I don't look good, I'm not smart, um, I'm fearful of a speech for NYU. I mean, all these kind of things come up for everybody, right? And so it's the gentleness and the approach to teach yourself to also love yourself fully, wholly, and completely. Yep. Does that answer your question, Valeria? Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Does anybody else maybe have any questions, any uh, that they might like to pose? You guys can also use the chat box below. Um, oh, and okay. Out loud in case you don't want to speak up, but please do. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Renee, for posting that. Um, yeah, it is very powerful to share what's happened. Um, but here's the thing, in, in, in a lot of these Me Too moments, right? Because I think empathetically, we can all embrace the fact we all have a belly button. I mean, just there alone, that's a connection, right? So do we get collapsed into traumas? Or do we raise above them? And then we hold space for someone else that's scratching their head like I did saying, what now? What do I do? Let's see, Joyce has asked, what is the greatest benefit you have received from meditation? All right, so uh, beyond peace of mind, um, meditation allowed me to access and fully anchor becoming fully cleared. And by fully cleared, that means all of my gifts became remembered uh, from clairvoyance which is clear intuitive basis, uh, clear scent, so I could have that clear smelling, clear audience, so I could have that clear hearing, clear gustant, so I could have clear tasting, clear tangency, which is psychometry, clear sentience, which is that clear feeling, which is fabulous to have in corporate America these days, to have that real understanding of what someone wants and the words that are not being said. So being fully cleared allows me that access point of clear cognizance to know what is without words. It's, it's basically telepathic. Thanks for asking. Does so that I, answer your question? Yeah, I have, okay. I have uh, two, two questions. Um, and I'm going to take it back to the context of, of, of the FA. Uh, I think one is as um, either an educator, a mentor, or like for even the leadership team, you know, trying to uh, work with um, students or Victoria is, is uh, the senior director of a makerspace. And, you know, as you started your talk, you know, students are going through a number of things. And, and so I, I'm just curious, like, how do you, you know, you, you can get an individual, you know, who comes today to take the time to, to be there, but like, how do you um, engage uh, people to feel that that's even an option? Because I think that for many people, you know, they just feel like they're stuck into, you know, a wheel um, and like a hamster running around and they don't really miss, it's hard to just even get them to pose. So I'm just curious, like, you know, if there's, an, and, and maybe there's no answer, but I, I'm just curious if you have any thoughts of like, how do you, you know, even make it like, look like it's an option because sometimes I feel like you tell it to people and they look at you like, yeah, no, we can't like, you know, and they keep running. So that's one sure. thing. And the other piece, you know, you talked about uh, empathy and we, we had a, a talk um, last week uh, by a, a designer and he was talking about like the difference between empathy and sympathy which I, it, it really resonated with me. Uh, and so I'm just curious if you have any thoughts. And so his point was like that oftentimes we think we have empathy and we just have sympathy for people and we're just highlighting, you know, um, the thing they're missing. 
and we forget also and that full empathy is recognizing what people you know might you know not have that you have but also things that they have and you might not have and so i i'm just curious if you have like any thoughts on this distinction between sympathy and empathy because i, I think that you know we it can be an overloaded word and sure sure those are Excellent point. So let me go back to that first one. Yes, I'm incredibly familiar with people looking at me like I have 15 heads. I am absolutely familiar with that. No matter what, remember, I am also a mother. So uh, that comes into play. Um, and here, here's what I think that's super, um, to, super cool to understand is we really do all have these innate gifts. So all of us have access. It comes down to choice. So I had forgotten to choose to self-love. I had forgotten to choose to honor my vehicle, my body. Um, you know, we're made of chemical. That's what we are. And we're floating bioenergy antennas going through space. That's what we are. And we're having these physical experiences um, along the way. It, it is staying in our own lane and recognizing oh, these God. waves space. that are... Whew, Sorry, I just heard someone. Uh, it's about staying in our own lane and being very dedicated um, to that place of equanimity, to that place of inner peace. Um, we are all going to have, um, in yoga, the Sanskrit word is samskara. And these are these, these pings, these dings, these bruises, these energetic experiences that come, these pals to the nose, it's gonna happen. We are all going to experience a red light sometime in our life. Okay, we can't not. So are we gonna go, oh my gosh, another red light. I might as well never drive again. Or do we experience it and then bring another, perhaps a little iota of shift to that experience instead of just focusing on the fact that we have another red light or another ping or bruise, can we experience something a little bit different? And it does take a dedication. Um, again, I'm breathing inside of my lungs I can't breathe inside of Valeria's lungs. Valeria's breathing is up to Valeria to breathe inside of her lungs. And yet I can still feel when I get to that place of clarity, of empathy, I can feel when I'm really in that magical place and I have been given that permission to access that information, I can feel inside someone's physicality to give information. And this takes this has taken me a dedicated, you know, solid decade to be able to access. Um, uh, so I would say it starts with the attitude of staying in your own lane. It takes the attitude of looking in the mirror and seeing yourself and your whole self, not just a little perspective of yourself and applying just a greater level of self-love each and every breath. So I hope that explains that first one. Um, the second one, empathy and sympathy, um, they, you know, one is an action of the other, honestly. And um, they're, they're, ex they're exclusive. Um, sympathy, sympathy tends to not serve much of a purpose other than to attach to something that you have familiar in your own physical experience. And it can tend to draw the energy into that hamster wheel, right? Instead of saying, I get it. And how about this? This gives uh, someone an opportunity and afford an allowance, if you will, a karmic allowance, karmic currency, lots of fancy words, but it gives a person a chance to sort of reach past themselves into a different potential realm. When they found that little place, that's no longer feeling bad about the experiences, but rather looking at the experiences as the lessons that they needed in order to level up. And then the empathy replaces any kind of sympathetic situation so that you can feel inside of yourself and see in others that they've had these experiences and words don't need to be shared. It's just an understanding. It's almost like a, I get it, right? When you connect with it and, um, I believe it gives us that little chance to, um, to find, I don't know, kind of that place where we can chew and digest. I hope that answers what you were looking for. I think there's a few written out. Let me see. Um, 
how do we prioritize our attention to important things in life? When we are faced with a small problem, all of the attention is focused towards problem, problem failing to realize there are other more important things. So how to zoom out of this. Okay, so again, it kind of comes down to there can never be more yin than yang. So um, you've identified a small problem as being the dominant issue. And so um, I would see uh, fit to find that place. You know, I'm not one to try to force a circle into a square here. Um, I'm one to sort of sit with it, close my eyes and feel here's the problem. So I know if I can focus on the problem, even just for a little bit, I know that I can ramp up the problem. I can energetically make it a bigger problem, but that also means I can ramp it down and make it a slightly less problem. So it creates that offering through the Planck field for space to inform you of the offerings that are available for the creation that you're looking to resolve. And so it does take presence of mind. Um, this isn't something that you're gonna do, you know, on a turnpike someplace going a thousand miles an hour. So realize that it can, but most likely it's gonna come to you at a more place of stillness, a place of quietness, whether that's seated or laying down or in a place of sleep. Um, and this will allow you, um, Again, I, I tend to use um, manifestations. I'll say, you know, please allow the um, information to come to me very subtly, easily, and sequentially in an information way that in my super highway is very easy for me to understand. And mind you, I'm a seizure experiencer. So after a seizure, I have to sing the ABC song to make sure I'm sequential. Because if it's not ABC, rather it's, you know, DMZ, I know I have to get really sequential so that I can align with the answers. So again, it's an inside job, not just to feel my own experiences and how I'm showing up for other people, but it's also about being very clear and empty in my experiences, recognizing that contrast and space are going to be simultaneous so that I can be in an antenna to absorb so that I can prioritize the situation. I hope, does that answer the question that you had on that one? I kind of see a head moving up and down. Okay, if you have more, you can always reach out to me privately. Um, let's see, how might we incorporate or introduce meditation into our work experience? So, so this is an interesting um, question and many um, meditation coaches would probably be in a good bit of disagreement with me because I remember one of the first meditation coaches I ever had insisted that we had to be seated with our legs a certain way and we had to be a certain way and that isn't reality, right? I can be in a meditative state wherever I am, no matter what I'm doing. Uh, cooking is a meditation, fishing is a meditation, Drawing is a meditation. Journaling is a meditation. Singing is a meditation. Dancing is a meditation. And so when you're working, turn your work experience into a meditation experience and find some way that that information will provide you with that little, again, that little ounce of nourish, nour, nourishment for that power of peace. And I hope that will answer your question. Um, what is the one thing Thing beyond meditation from a physical sense that offers an easy access point. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so I've done this before. Thanks, Joyce. Um, Valeria knows this one. This is one of the very first things that I kind of tell anybody to do as a health coach, a yoga instructor, a meditation coach. And then I know if they're really vested or not. And it's so simple. So I get those little um, toe separators. The ladies will know this as the pedicure things. They go in between your toes. And this takes you to a soul level. Really, literally, the metaphor. Our feet are our souls. And if you place these in between your toes while you're sleeping or when you're in a wondering stage, you're trying to have some sort of solution, it's going to open up your meridians at a soul level. So this helps us get grounded. Super simple, super easy, super affordable. And for any of the men that are listening, if you don't have them, I bet you know a lady that does. So, you know, that's a, a real fast, easy and inexpensive way um, to go about um, doing anything. Um, let's see, 
I can't be still never been able to. And I found ballet to be my form of meditation for me. That's not unusual. Um, it does come with time. Remember, if you look at life almost like in, in four segments, so we have zero to 25, which is, um, I like to call that where we grow and where we know. Okay. And then from 25 to 50, this is sort of like where we learn and where we earn. Okay. And then as we get from 50 to 75, this is that little area where we care and where we share. And that's the area that I'm in now, despite a fake ID, right? And then we get into 75 and older, and this is where we prepare. So sometimes, um, Psalm, this is where we have to move, where the movement carries us. But while you're doing it, consider those eyes, the Shoshen eyes. When you're dancing, when you're doing ballet, when you're doing any kind of movement, allow the grace of the movement to inform you. While you're moving right, are you going into your feminine energy? Are you going into your masculine energy? Ask the ballet, the orchestra of your body and your soul to give you information. I hope that answers. Are there any other questions that anybody might have? No, but may I offer uh, an example? Yeah. Of what you're describing? So um, I participate in uh, some of the yoga uh, classes online that Anne has uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. And uh, <laughs> the other day she was asking the group, you know, what, what, were we experiencing and someone mentioned that their shoulder, you know, was experiencing some pain and yeah, I didn't feel like talking about my sciatic because I'd been doing really well with it, but I hadn't done yoga in a couple of days and it had started to aggravate myself uh, or hurt again. And uh, I didn't say anything. And then Anne identified it. So when she's speaking of connecting to uh, these other energies uh, as a tool, when you're in the workplace as well, just to get that type of information actually allows you to be more of service to others and, and bring more of an offering as well. So I'm grateful because guess what? It doesn't hurt today. <laughs> so and that you. does happen. I mean, you know, I was 28 years in the corporate world and it was in my later, you know, my third phase of life that I shifted into more of the holistic healthcare and the concerns of the body. And I did do it selfishly. I did do it because I was healing myself and making myself whole and remembering my gifts. Um, but I did use these gifts in corporate world. So I didn't have to discuss work so much. I could see it. Their aura spoke to me. I had to get very clear, very present and very empty and, and literally almost meaningless in order to be able to hear, feel, touch, taste, see, and touch upon what was happening in the experience of the other person. And this isn't for the lighthearted, I get it. You're asking how you can get there. It's about staying in your own lane. And if it is to be, it really, it, it, it's up to you. It's up to you for you to breathe in your lungs. And I'm going to breathe in my lungs and Piero's going to breathe in his and Psalm's going to breathe in hers and Valeria's going to breathe in hers. And then as you start to get into this place where you're no longer frantic and you're no longer worrying about deadlines, you'll just know because you just visualize your future thriving self is already happy. Your project that you needed to do is done. You can see the cheeks on your face smiling from ear to ear. And you haven't even experienced it yet. But if you know that the outcome is of pleasing and it's pleasurable, then you start to backtrack. Like when I wrote this, I wrote backwards, right? I wrote it from the back and then I wrote all the way up. And then when I went to go correct it, it was much easier because I saw where I wanted to go. I saw my end result. So make sure whatever you're manifesting as an end result is something that you're aligning with. I mean, I don't know too many people. I have an 18 year old and I'll say, when she's got test anxiety, she's like, I'm nervous. I said, okay, what grade do you visualize? And she'll say, well, maybe an 88. I go, how do you visualize a B? <laughs> and so she'll go, all right, I visualize a 94. And then sure enough, she'll come home and she will have gotten it. I mean, so take it upon yourself to see your project finished, to see your degree you know, finished. You're not in competition with anybody. You're staying in your lane and you're visualizing your future thriving self, not Valeria's because you can't breathe into her lungs. Breathe into your own. I hope that answers everything. Yes, thank you so much. And actually, I want to just make a comment. 
um, how you said that uh, meditation can also be in a form of some art, like drawing and everything. And I feel like bringing it back to the content, uh, context of DFA, we actually do a lot of prototyping. And a lot of times prototyping is actually us making something by hand or drawing, like sketching. And Laura is um, great about teaching us how to do sketches, even though not all of us can draw. And I feel like this is something for us to keep in mind that even while working on the project, we can still stay in that state of mind and apply meditation through prototyping, I guess. Oh, for sure. And, and remember, even the color of the pens that you chose to do the drawing have meaning. The shapes that you draw have meaning. I'm a big believer. I've been doing vision boards every New Year's Eve for the past 10 years. And I find these fabulously healing because there's stuff that I didn't even think about. I put it down there, I look back and I go, holy moly, I achieved every single solitary thing that I manifest on there. And if it didn't get on there, it didn't happen. So remember, when you're visualizing, when you're doing, this is your lane. What's in your lane? Stay in your lane. Because as you're in your lane, guess what? You have access to my lane. You have access to everything. All right, thank you, Anne. Um, I think it's time to wrap up, but- Yeah, for sure. In case anyone has any questions, um, I can post um, Anne's uh, website in the chat. Um, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, because we're building, I have a brand new website that's just hasn't even been rolled out yet. Um, so we're looking, if you're interested in more information, we um, can give you a subscriber link. But I believe you have my um, website. I collaborate um, with the quantumshiwa.com folks and beyondtransformation.org. It really helps all of us get nice tools to apply to everyday life. Um, so yeah, so so look into it in any way I can help. Just reach out. All right. Well, thank you so much. And before we log off, um, I just wanted to say that we as a part of DFA have been um, doing speaker series event this semester. So if anyone is interested to learn more about what we do and what we have been up to, I'm going to post um, a link to our YouTube channel um, so you can view other recordings. But yeah, thank you so much. And I, I hope this was um, informative and empathetic. <laughs> well, right. I hope so too. Thanks everybody. Happy holidays Bye. to you all. Be gentle with yourselves and remember, listen to the sound of your body. All Take right. Care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye everybody. The Zoom wave. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We